Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue with reading from the New Revised Standard Version today. Acts chapter 23, verses 12 through 35. It's a chunk of a reading, so I'm going to pause a little bit in here to kind of give you some editorial notes. Um, but let's uh, pick up. Remember yesterday, um, Paul was taken into protective custody um, because of the Pharisees and the Sadducees arguing. So it says, in the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders saying, quote, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case, and we are ready to do away with him before he arrives, end quote. Now the son of Paul's sister, that's Paul's nephew, heard about the ambush. So he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul, Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune, and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. Let me pause for just a moment. So in this situation, um, even though Paul's a prisoner, he has definite rights. And um, while... Some prisons back then were, you know, throw, lock them away and throw away the key and people died of neglect uh, pretty often. As a citizen of Rome, Paul has definite rights. And even if he's imprisoned, he has authority and he has the right to do these things. So it's a little different than our justice system. Man, once a person is behind bars, if they don't have a lawyer, good luck, right? Paul, Paul says do this and they do it. Uh, so just understand that imprisonment's a little bit different. Picking back up at verse 19. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside privately, that's Paul's nephew, and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly to his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of them... Uh, their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have informed me of this. Uh, thank goodness for nephews. I have a couple of good ones myself. Um, but this is a brave young man. You see, a centurion um, is generally regarded as a person in charge of a hundred people. A tribune is in charge of several centurions. In other words, they are kind of like the, the local governor or the magistrate um, over um, hundreds, plural, of uh, Roman soldiers and the administrator of Rome in that area. And so this young boy has gone and spoke uh, to, uh, um, you know, pretty big, pretty big folks. Let's pick up at verse 23. Then he, the tribune, summoned two of the centurions and said, Get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect, quote, Claudius Lysias to his excellency, the governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. But when I learned that he was a Roman citizen, I came with the guard and rescued him. Since I wanted to know the charge for which they accused him, I had him brought to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against this man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers to also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antip Antipatris. 
The next day, they let the horsemen go on with him while they returned to their barracks. When they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he, Paul, belonged to. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. So again, this is a um, very historically, it moved here, they moved here, they did this, they did that. Um, I don't know, if you're going to have anything to, to celebrate for the Romans here, they do take their citizenship seriously. And I think for us as Christians, what if we took our Christian citizenship that seriously? Um, I don't know. It's Like I said, this is pretty historically heavy season here. Um, it would be pretty hard to... Uh, to uh, preach on these texts. I mean, it's it's neat history, but um, anyway, we'll try again tomorrow with the, the rest of that. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the days that we live through, how uh, we may not always see you directly at work, and yet underneath the surface we can discern the music of your uh, Holy Spirit singing God, I thank you for those who delivered Paul, and I thank you, God, who um, even today, some folks that are delivered from injustice, and uh, God, where that doesn't happen, we pray that you would use us to be instruments of that kind of restorative work. In Jesus' name, amen.